Today, I'm going to give you my top 11 tips for better web design. Hello there and welcome back to the Web Monkey Show. I'm Alex. Hope you're staying safe and doing well wherever you are. Now, like I said in the intro today, I'm going to make the kind of video that I haven't made in a very, very long time. And this involves web design. And mainly, I'm going to give you my top 11 tips to improve the overall design of your website, make it more aesthetically pleasing and attractive to anyone who might end up on your website. So without wasting any time, let's jump right in. All right. So the very first tip I'm going to give you here would involve the use of your logo as the link to your homepage. Now, what you're looking at right here is a website for the Maryland Polo Club. I was actually involved in designing and building the site. And what you see right now is on the main menu, we don't have a home link. All right. What you do have, however, is the logo on the left, which actually serves as the link to the home page. So if I go to the news page, just as an example, what's going to happen right now is that if I click on the logo, it's going to take me back to the home page. So this is the modern design. You don't want to have a link on your main menu that says home because it's kind of redundant. Your logo should serve as the link to your home page. The second tip is going to involve the call to action, meaning on your home page in the very first section, you should have or rather anyone coming to your site should have an idea instantly of what your website is all about. Using the exact same Maryland Polo Club website here, you can see right now it says welcome to Maryland Polo Club. You have two buttons about the club, become a sponsor, but then you have the message matches are played 6 p.m. Fridays and 11 a.m. on Sunday. So right off the bat, you know that, okay, this is a website for the Maryland Polo Club. And they also play matches 6 p.m. on Fridays, as well as 11 a.m. on Sundays. Let me introduce you to Lab Cyber, my cybersecurity uh, academy. You can see right here on the home page, it says cybersecurity knowledge made easy. And I do have the message right there. Cybersecurity training is an absolute necessity and you've come to the right place for it. So anyone coming across Lab Cyber for the very first time will know instantly this is a platform where I can learn about cybersecurity. Let me give you one more example. This is from Ahrefs and it says, with Ahrefs, you don't have to be an SEO pro to rank higher and get more traffic. So instantly, you know exactly what these websites are all about and the kind of content you can expect to uh, receive. So make sure that on your homepage in the very first section, you have a call to action, but you also have a message indicating exactly what your website is all about. The third tip here is going to involve the use of sliders, carousels and accordions. And in general, you want to avoid using them as much as possible. Now, I know that over here on the Maryland Polo Club, they do have slides, but it was their decision, not mine. And the thing is, if you're going to use slides at all, make sure that there are no more than three. That's because studies have shown that typically after the third slide, people lose interest and would rarely ever look at the fourth slide or the, or the fifth slide. So if you're going to use slides, make sure there are no more than three. Carousels and accordions, people rarely ever look at them as well. So try to avoid using them. But there is an exception though involving accordions. You can use accordions for your FAQs section, your frequently asked questions section. And that's what I did over here on Lab Cyber. Down here, I do have my FAQs, I have the questions and the answers in an accordion format. The reason why this is acceptable is because if people are interested in what you have to offer on your website and they have questions, they will actively seek out the frequently asked questions page or section. And it doesn't matter how you present the information, they would click and learn more. They'll be curious to figure out whether or not you already have the answer to one of the questions that they might have. So using accordions on your FAQ section is perfectly fine. But for anything else, try to avoid use, using accordions, uh, sliders and carousels. And one more reason why you want to avoid using them is because on your mobile device, on phones, they are pretty challenging to access. They don't function quite as well. And overall, like I said, just try to avoid using them uh, as much as possible. The fourth tip here is going to involve the use of a background image or video on your home page. Now, right now, what you're seeing is a static background image on my lab cyber website. 
but I do have a second option where I used a video playing in the background. Now, which of these two do you prefer? Is it this one right here with just the background image or the one with the video playing in the background? My guess is it's going to be the one with the video playing in the background. And that's because videos bring life to your website. They make things more lively. There's activity and people are more likely to want to scroll down and see what I have to offer on my website because of the video. But with a static background image, it's lifeless. It's a little bit boring as well. And uh, whenever you can, it is often better to use a background video as opposed to using a background image. However, there are five main rules that should be applied whenever you choose to use a background video. Number one, make sure the video actually serves a purpose, which is to summarize the content provided on your website. Mine is all about cybersecurity courses and so on. That's why the video, you can see things like hacking detected. You have somebody hacking right there, people typing on the keyboard and so on. It's basically meant to reflect what my website is all about. So if you're going to use a video, make sure it's a summary in a way of everything your website is all about. Second is make sure that the video isn't long, no more than 10, 12 seconds. And then also make sure that the video loops. It starts, it ends, it resumes, ends, resumes, ends, and so on. Just make sure it loops on and on and on and on. Number four, make sure there is no audio coming from the video as well. You don't want to have audio playing in the background. And the final tip here involving videos is whenever applicable, use a background overlay. You can't, you, you may be able to see, but I do have a background overlay that's dark and it's a little bit uh, uh, opaque. And because I wanted people to be able to read the text, the cybersecurity knowledge made easy. So if you're going to use a background video and you have text, overlapping the video, make sure you apply an overlay on the video so that people will be able to read the text that's been displayed on your section. The fifth tip involves the use of scrolling over clicking. And the point I'm trying to make here is that people are actually more comfortable scrolling up and down on a web page as opposed to clicking to go to another page and so on. That's why, for example, over here on Mashable.com, you can keep scrolling on and on and on and on, and it's almost impossible to even see the footer of this website. I keep on scrolling, 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 scrolling. I cannot get to the footer. It's also why platforms like Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, there is never such a thing as pagination. It's just one very long page and you just keep on scrolling down, scrolling down, or you scroll up or you scroll down. Studies have shown that it works. People will spend more time on a page that is extremely long, but that has plenty of content as opposed to a page that is being broken down to smaller pages or, or additional pages. So avoid the use of pagination. If you have plenty of content or plenty of information about a particular topic, put it all on one single post. Avoid using paginations. You can make the post as long as possible. It doesn't matter. People will scroll down because they prefer to scroll as opposed to clicking on your website. The next tip is going to involve the use of visual cues, especially in your images. And what you're looking at right here is a very, very popular image I found on the internet. And it involves two very similar images. It's actually a study. In the very first image, you have the baby looking directly at you. And then you have this message about sensitive skin on the right. But then in the second image, you now have the baby looking directly to the right at the message. And the study proved that in the second image, people actually spend more time looking at the message because the baby can maybe psychologically redirected their attention to the message. So whenever possible, if you're going to use visual cues like this, make sure that the person you're using or the object you're using is drawing attention to the message that you're trying to uh, put across to the person on the website. Now, there is a second example in here. It's three different variants of the exact same design, except that in the very first image, you have the guy looking directly at you. You have the contact form to his right. And then in the second image, you now have the guy looking at the contact form, just like we had in the very first example. But in the third example here, you now have in place of the guy, you have an arrow pointing at the contact form. Now, which of these three do you think converted the most? 
You may think it's number two, but it's actually number three. It turns out that using arrows or symbols or things like that, things like that actually draw more attention uh, as opposed to using people, which is rather interesting. So whenever possible, use visual cues to draw attention to uh, whatever important message you're trying to pass across on your website. The next step is going to involve the use of a sidebar or rather do not use a sidebar on your website. Now I'm using Mashable here as an example. And yes, it's Mashable, one of the biggest websites in the world. And yes, they do have a sidebar on the post here about uh, Agent Carter, but here's the thing. So when you're scrolling down and I begin to read, my attention is divided between the actual content of the article and then the sidebar on the right. Typically, you want to avoid something like this. Instead, eliminate the sidebar, do not use the sidebar at all, and just have the content of your article right there. And here's an example here on my own personal blog. Right now, anyone who wants to read this article will read it without any distractions because I have no sidebar on the left or any sidebar on the right. Now, it is debatable. Some people will tell you that, no, you should use a sidebar because sidebars do help to provide more information and can also help to, uh, can help people find other articles that they might be interested in. It is debatable, but personally, I would recommend that you don't use a sidebar, just have your content in the middle of your page, all the way from the top to the bottom, no distractions on the left or the right, and generally try to avoid using a sidebar whenever you can. The next tip here is going to involve the use of font families, and I do have two tips to provide you. Tip number one is do not use more than three font families on your website. You can use one specifically for your headers, like your H1s, H2s, and so on. And then you could use the other one for the actual text in your articles. And then technically you could use a third different font family for the links in your articles. Personally, I used to, I use one for my headers and then one for the actual text and links in my articles. But if you prefer, you could use a third different font family for your links. And the second tip here is that if you're going to use very interesting or stylish uh, kinds of font families, make sure that they represent the tone of your website. Now, here is another example, Lemonade Chicken Guy. I actually also worked on this website. Uh, he's a local celebrity in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, you can see we used a font family for the main menu and also uh, right here as well, where you have, you know, motivational speaking buttons and so on. It looks like Comic Sans. And normally Comic Sans isn't the kind of font family you'd want to use on a business website. But the thing is, this guy is an entertainer. He's all about energy, making people laugh, and he's a comic in general. So using the Comic Sans font family on his website is perfectly fine. But there is no way I'm gonna use the Comic Sans font family on my own uh, blog about web development and things like that, or even on my uh, lab Cyber Academy because it just doesn't match the tone of the website. So. If you're gonna use very special, stylish kinds of font families, make sure that they represent the tone of your website. Tip number nine here is going to involve familiarity. And what I mean here is, whenever you build your website or you design your website, stick to familiar layouts that people already know and would expect on your website. For example, my header or the header on most websites typically would have the logo on the left hand side and then a main menu on the right hand side. Very rarely would you ever see the reverse where you have the logo on the right hand side and then the menu on the left hand side. It's extremely uncommon. So whenever you want to design your website, stick to familiarity. I know that you may want to get very, very creative and make your website a bit more edgy, but studies have shown that people prefer familiarity. So if you're gonna get creative, you can get creative in using things like animations, uh, mouse effects, scrolling effects, that can help to make your website stand out from the crowd. But when it comes to the actual layouts, uh, stick to familiarity, don't go crazy, don't, don't start creating layouts that people have never seen before. Uh, you're more likely to, to have people losing interest on your website as a result. Tip number 10 is all about consistency and spacing. And by consistency, what I mean here is that once you've chosen a particular design structure for maybe your homepage, 
try to keep that structure for the rest of your pages. And even on your home page, be consistent with the design. As an example, right here, my second section after the background video has a white background color. The third section has a green background color. The fourth section has a white background color. Next one has a green background color, white, green, and so on and so forth. So be consistent. My menu items, for example, I use the exact same font family for them. I didn't use one font family for library and then I used a different font family for my account. No, nobody does that. So be consistent with your design structure. And when it comes to spacing, we're talking about margins and patterns. You want to keep the exact same margins between your sections. So the amount of margin I have, or the amount of spacing, I should say, that I have between section two and section three is the exact same amount of spacing between section three and section four and so on and so forth. Also, looking at the titles of each section, the amount of spacing I have between what is lab cyber and then the top of the section is the exact same amount of spacing that I have between meet your instructor and the top of its section and also why lab cyber and the top of the section and so on and so forth. So keep your spacing consistent margins, patterns, as well as the overall design structure on your website should be consistent. My 11th and final tip is going to involve simplicity and I'm going to quote Hicks law, uh, which states that the more choices a person has to make, the longer it will take for them to make the decision. And there was actually a very interesting study that was performed uh, a few years ago involving two different stores uh, selling jam. One store was selling 24 varieties of jam while the other was selling just six varieties. And it turns out that the second store selling just six varieties sold more than the one with 24 varieties. It's basically the paradox of choice. The more choices you have to make, the less likely you're going to make the choice in time. And you may not even make your decision because guess what? You become overwhelmed. So how can that be applied to web design? Well, it's simple. Keep things simple. Don't overcomplicate things on your website. Keep your information simple and concise. Pages like the contact page as an example. What is it meant for? It's meant to be a page where people can contact you, send you a message. So what do you have right there? You have a short message and a contact form, nothing more. Right here, you don't see me having links to my articles or links to other pages and so on. Nobody needs that. My library page, which shows the courses. What do I have right there? I have my courses listed out. Simple, neat, nothing more. So try, to, so try to keep your information, your content, very, very simple, concise. Your design follows a particular kind of structure. Just keep things simple and people will appreciate your website a whole lot more. So that's it, my top 11 tips for web design. And if you have other tips you'd like to share, of course, you can put them down in the comment section below. If you have any questions, uh, do let me know. I might make a similar video for our uh, e-commerce websites. So if you're interested in such a video, do let me know in the comments section. And of course, if you have any questions, put them down. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, share the video with anyone who may feel might benefit from it. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. I'm Alex. It's been a pleasure presenting to you my top 11 tips on web design. And I'll see you next time. Bye.